Okay. <clears throat> so our next speaker will help us attain the ability that every person thinks she lacks, at least me, uh, self-control. Uh, he has a clinical psychology degree from the University of Bergen, and he's now a PhD fellow at the University of Oslo, focusing on the predictors of, effect of effectiveness in psychotherapy. Self-control is important both inside and outside of the therapy room, um, which is why Magnus will talk about how emotional wisdom can be used to acquire this important ability. Please give a warm applause for Magnus Nurmo. Thank you. Yeah. So, um, yeah. You can just start it right away, James. No need to wait. <laughs> so, I'm going to talk about self control. And uh, I imagine that most of you could realize that just by looking at this picture of these marshmallows. And that's because of the famous psychological experiments where Walter Michel gave children the option of either getting a marshmallow right away or if they could delay. Uh, or uh, control themselves, use self-control, they can get two marshmallows. Uh, now, what, what Michelle found was that the children who could resist the first marshmallow, use self-control, they were a lot better off as adults. They were happier, had uh, better relationships, uh, and had more professional success. And it's not often in psychology where you find this, where you find this one experiment which can predict uh, something in the future, far future. So psychologists were all over self-control. It seems so very important, and it is important. Uh, but the problem is the model we use to understand self-control. So let me explain how this model works. You have emotions on the one hand, stupid impulses, irrational stuff. Uh, you want the uh, marshmallow, you want to do uh, dumb things for yourself, and then you have self-control, your stoic rationality that can quench the self-control and produce the behavior that produces success in the long run. So in this sense, it's kind of like your brain telling your heart, no, don't eat the marshmallow, stop it right away. <laughs> and, this, and this is the model that we intuitively use. And as a student, I'm guessing that most of you here are students, you feel this... Uh, this power relationships uh, often. You sit there uh, reading your books, uh, uh, you easily get distracted by Facebook and Snapchat, and uh, it's hard work. Maybe you're thinking about going to Pecha Kutcha and having a beer. Oh, maybe you shouldn't do that. Maybe you should read. Ah, you feel the struggle going on inside you very often. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, boom! You're sitting here, <laughs> drinking beer, what happened? And what you're experiencing is not restricted to you, it's a human universal. It's something we all feel, we all feel how weak our self-control is. It, it, every day our self-control uh, lacks us more than we should think it should. So I think that this intuitive model is misguided, it's wrong, it's anti-humanitarian. And it's a classic folly of psychology where we focus only on the individual. We want to understand the individual process, so we focus on the individual. Uh, yeah. So if that's wrong, what's the alternative, you ask? Well, we should ask ourselves, where did self-control come from? How did it evolve? Our ancient ancestors, they didn't have marshmallows or Facebook or Pecha Kucha Nights. But what they did need to do was to cooperate. That's our ecological niche. That's what humans are good at, cooperation. And if you're going to cooperate, then you need to restrain yourself. The essence of cooperation is restraint, really. Behavior regulation. It's tit for tat, I help you, you help me. If everyone is selfish, then there's no cooperation, and that's our thing, really. So uh, we evolved some pro-social emotions to help us with that. We didn't evolve self-control, we evolved emotions. Gratitude, compassion, and pride. These are emotions that elicit a motivation inside you. So you don't, your behavior comes out uh, naturally. You, you can help the group without needing to bite their teeth down and use your self-control. Think about the best boss you have ever had, or the best teacher, or the best parent ever. What are they good at? Well, it's eliciting these emotions. It's saying that we, I care about this team. We're a team, we love each other, this is great. We're selling paper and reading books and learning guitar, so I care about you. But they also have to say, 
this task is important. So they have to elicit these emotions and they have to direct it towards something. So uh, this is a different model of uh, self-control or behavior regulation. So yes, we have self-control, but it's weak and it's, it doesn't really get us anywhere. And it's, we shouldn't rely on it too much. We also have pro-social emotions that can help us regulate ourselves. And while uh, pro-social emotion is strong and it's potent and it's excitatory, it's fun to do things in team and do stuff for people you love, self-control is weak, it's taxing, it's hard for you, it's, it's harmful for your body, actually. So uh, you should rely on your pro-social emotions as much as you can. Uh, let's say you're, you want to learn, uh, you, you have a child and you want to uh, show her how to read. Uh, now, a child, you shouldn't ask the child to use self-control, use your grit, bite your teeth down. You should learn this. No, you should say, I love you. We're a team. Let's go to Tucson Field. Let's do stuff together. And reading a book is important. This is really important. We need to learn to read. And if the child loves her mother, then she will internalize this and say, okay, it's important to you, then it's important to me. So it will, the behavior, correct behavior, will flow effortlessly from the child, or it can be still hard, but effortless, <laughs> more effortless. <laughs> think about the children in the original marshmallow study. We shouldn't think about self-control as a thing they have in their brain. No, they're embedded in a social network, and either people care about them and care about the meta metaphorical marshmallow, or they don't. It's not something they have in here. Uh, I use the term pro-social emotions a lot. Let's not call it that. Let's call it what it is. It's about love. Ladies and gentlemen, love put a man on the moon. Every great piece of art you ever saw is a product of love, and every great human achievement and scientific discovery as well it's not about the self grinding down and oh, using a grit or something like that. Now the last slide is just to confess that none of these ideas are my own. They're all, uh, <laughs> I got them all from this book. It's a new book. It's a great book. Uh, I recommend you read it. Have a lovely evening. <laughs>